My name is Tom and I'm a colon cancer survivor. I was having some abdominal pain back in 2012 and it was during a routine physical that I was telling my doctor that and he told me it needed to get checked out and within a couple of days I was having a CT scan and the next day I was in front of a surgeon. Initially I thought it was just a situation where the removal was going to be the final process, surgery, and then I was done. But when the surgeon mentioned that I was going to be doing some chemotherapy, then I knew things were a little more uh, severe than I thought. Before the chemo regimens were going to start, my local oncologist was telling me to go get genetics testing done. He didn't tell me that I had to, but he highly suggested that I get this done. And I thought about it actually for a couple of days, but Tom was referred for genetic counseling at Cone because of his early onset of cancer and his family history of cancer. Biomarker testing can help us determine if somebody would be at a higher risk for having a hereditary cancer syndrome or it could tell us whether somebody might have different types of treatment options. I'm John Strickler. I'm a GI medical oncologist here at the Duke Cancer Institute. We work very closely with our community oncologists to help identify patients who might benefit from some of our innovative clinical trials. So this local medical oncologist uh, worked hard and found uh, Tom and, and referred Tom to me. The day I met Tom, he was a different guy than you'll see right now. So he uh, had been treated for around two years with conventional chemotherapy. This is chemotherapy that's been around for many years. Um, the treatments he had been on to that point are not curative. They're really designed to help people live longer and, and hopefully preserve quality of life. Um, unfortunately, Tom had experienced disease progression on all of those standard therapies, so he had very limited options left. And at the time that he came in, he had significant symptoms from his cancer. It had um, spread in his abdomen in a way that was causing him tremendous pain. I think he would agree that it was a very difficult time for him in his life. When we met him, he was struggling with severe pain despite being on very large doses of narcotics. And um, he was not sleeping well, not eating well, losing weight, and feeling pretty terrible. The people I work with have seen me in good times and bad. A lot of them don't tell you that, you know, they didn't think you were going to make it. They don't want that in your ear, but they tell me that now. My whole life was, you know, built around doing a lot of physical stuff, bike riding, running, tennis. And when this happened, it was something that I had to give up for a little while. When I first got the biomarker testing, I didn't know what it was going to lead to until the chemo sessions, the radiation, they didn't work. I knew it was the biomarker testing that got me involved in a treatment session that really made the difference. There are many different types of biomarkers out there and it can be confusing when you hear that term to understand what a biomarker is. The types of biomarkers that, that we focus on are what we call predictive biomarkers. So we're looking for biomarkers that would predict that a patient would benefit from a personalized treatment. That's what occurred in Tom's case where he had a predictive biomarker that suggested that he might benefit from immune therapy. When we gave the immune therapy it basically unleashed his immune system to go ahead and attack his tumor. When I came back for that second session I asked Dr. Strickler, do I still need to be on these pain meds? He was still on high doses of narcotics but he found that his pain was much better controlled very quickly after receiving that first dose. So he came back to see me two weeks later and he said, Dr. Strickler, I want to just stop them. And I said, look, Tom, we got to take a step back. Let's, let's slowly taper off these pain medicines and um, see if we can get you down to zero on them and, and see if we can get this pain under control. And amazingly, he tapered off those medicines over a couple of weeks. And by the time I was seeing him two weeks later, he was back to biking and exercising and had his life back again. The sessions that were going on or the type that you continue to do while you can tolerate them. So I'd gone over two years uh, with this treatment and you know and CT scans are, are showing now that it's not even on the radar. When I came off of the treatments in 2017 I was able to get back to bike riding running and doing whatever I was doing prior to that.
When we first started treatment, my mother was looking for a way to kind of make a presence, so, so she actually made a donation to the cancer uh, institute where I was having the, the treatment done, and there's a plaque in the garden out there. It'll be there forever, so it's kind of a symbol for her and myself. And uh, just, you know, a little way of her sending me a message and the doctors a message for taking care of my cancer. In the old days of cancer treatment, it was one size fits all. A patient was diagnosed with an advanced cancer and we would give a standard chemotherapy regardless of what was driving that tumor. In the era of personalized medicine, we're increasingly finding that uh, a cancer type is not just one tumor, it may be um, any number of different types of tumors. And we're finding uh, personalized treatments that uncover the biology of the tumor and attack the drivers of that tumor. And often when I talk to people about my story, and I know they have cancer too, they want to know what I go through, you know, what are my side effects. Side effects are always a hot topic, but I also ask them if they got screened because that's the thing that led me to the treatment that really made the big difference. While not everybody has the same reaction to this personalized medicine um, or may not have the same outcome in regards to their biomarker testing. It brings a lot of hope and it's very exciting to be in this time when we can utilize this information to help benefit our patients. You know, whenever someone comes here for trial, we never know for sure if the trial is going to help the patient. And we're, we're clear to patients that not everyone benefits, but I felt like he had as good a shot as anyone of getting benefit from that trial. I think about that first day when he was so sick and struggled even to sit up in a chair to talk to me that day, to the path that he went through over two years, um, to seeing him get his life back and hearing his stories of riding 100 miles on his bike, which was always a dream of ours when we first met because it's something he really loved. I always used to come to him and I'd show him my bike rides that I was doing and, uh, and he'd always say, oh, 30 miles, uh, couldn't go 40. Ah, oh, 80 miles, couldn't go 100. So he's always encouraging me. You know, he always, I know he always liked to see that, but, but he, he was really huge in, in everything he's done for me. And he, he did it, you know, all these years later. It's very motivational for me as an oncologist that our research can change the lives of patients and that these advancements are a lot closer than they seem. I've always looked at cancer as being like an opponent that has to be defeated. I mean, you know, you don't, you don't have time to sit back and think about stuff. You need to know what's the plan to get rid of this, and that's the plan you're on. You're not in control now, so you're pretty much along for the ride, but you need to be the best patient you can be. Just having it as an opponent that you need to defeat is uh, the type of you know, mentality I think is, is good for the cancer patient. So to be, be more on offense than on defense, if you can be.